the shakeup at the White House. President Trump's chief of staff is out after a war in the West Wing goes public. The president just a short time ago asked to explain and the retired general now in the West Wing. Also breaking tonight, we are watching North Korea. They have launched another intercontinental ballistic missile flying higher, farther and longer than before. And tonight, experts right here saying this kind of missile could now possibly reach the East Coast, New York City or Washington. After seven years of promising to repeal and replace Obamacare, the Republican effort collapses. The final seconds of drama, how would John McCain vote? The officer shot and killed as he was trying to help people trapped in a car accident. The escape from prison, the inmate then accused of kidnapping and killing the warden's own stepdaughter. And we have major storms hitting the East Coast at this hour. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night, and it wouldn't be the end of another week without another major bombshell out of Washington. Tonight, the shakeup at the White House. The chief of staff, Reince Priebus, seen getting onto Air Force One with the president today, but by the end of the day, he would no longer have his job. Tonight, in the pouring rain, the president answering questions about the latest figure in his administration to go and about the retired general about to arrive in the West Wing. ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, leading us off. Tonight, standing in the pouring rain, President Trump announced that Reince Priebus, his chief of staff, is out, replaced by Homeland Security Secretary General John Kelly. Reince is a good man. John Kelly will do a fantastic job. General Kelly has been a star, done an incredible job thus far, respected by everybody, a great, great American. Reince Priebus, a good man. Priebus was on Air Force One with the president today, and so was his nemesis, the new communications director, Anthony Scaramucci. Scaramucci is the winner in their bitter feud, which exploded into public view this week. I don't know if this is repairable or not. That will be up to the president. It was Scaramucci who threw down the gauntlet, phoning a reporter with The New Yorker and ripping into Priebus, calling the White House chief of staff, quote, a bleeping paranoid schizophrenic, accusing him of leaking and adding that Priebus will be asked to resign very shortly. Scaramucci's expletive-laced tirade also ripped into the president's chief strategist. I'm not Steve Bannon, he said, launching into a profane attack that we can't repeat on television. I'm not trying to build my own brand. But today, Bannon is still at the White House. So is Scaramucci. Priebus is out. Rights is a superstar. Priebus lasted barely six months in a White House that has seen more early turmoil than any other. The National Security Advisor, gone. The Press Secretary, gone. And now gone, too, the Chief of Staff, who had been desperately trying to hang on. On behalf of the entire senior staff around you, Mr. President, we thank you for the opportunity and the blessing that you've given us to serve your agenda and the American people. But Priebus and Trump never really clicked, and the former RNC chairman struggled to manage all the competing factions in the West Wing. Now the president is turning to a military man to impose order on his chaotic White House. The president offered a hint earlier today of what was to come. John Kelly, who has done an incredible job of Secretary of Homeland Security, incredible. One of our real stars, truly one of our stars. And John Carl with us here in New York, really just dizzying on this front, uh, who's gone and who's coming. But first, Reince Priebus, we are just hearing from him tonight. Mm -hmm. And you've been reporting tensions had been simmering for some time. This was in the works even before this public feud this week? The president had made it clear weeks ago that this change was coming. In terms of that statement that we've heard from Reince Priebus on the new chief of staff, John Kelly, he says, I can't think of a better person than General John Kelly to succeed me. But you know what's going to happen now, David, is you will see a purge of RNC veterans, Republican National Committee veterans in the White House. The people that Priebus had brought in will be leaving, leaving very soon, many of them today. And check this out. Under consideration is Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, the embattled Attorney General, to go over to become Secretary of Homeland Security to replace John Kelly. That is at least under consideration. A lot more to come on that from yes. John Carl. Thank you. We are also following breaking developments involving North Korea. Tonight, they have launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. And this evening, experts now saying that this missile went higher and further than before. Could this kind of missile now reach cities on the East Coast, possibly New York or D.C.? ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, tonight. 
The North Korean missile traveled farther than any missile they have ever launched. The ICBM airborne for close to 45 minutes before splashing down in the Sea of Japan. It looks like this thing can go about 10,000 kilometers. That means from North Korea they could hit most of the United States. So they finally done it. Meaning not just Hawaii, where they are already putting out safety warnings, but Seattle, Los Angeles, and possibly even Washington, D.C. and New York. Like the missile launched on July 4th, this ICBM was blasted straight into space. But the North can angle the missile trajectory for distance instead of altitude. And today's missile went higher and flew longer than the July 4th test, which is why experts fear it could potentially hit the mainland. Like horse used in hand grenades, getting close is all that's needed when you're dealing with nuclear weapons. The U.S. and South Korea responded tonight by conducting their own missile exercises, something they did after the July 4th test to little effect. And Martha Raddatz with us live again tonight. Martha, the amount of time this missile was in the air, the distance, as you point out, really concerned those watching closely today. But we still know that North Korea's main goal here is trying to get a nuclear weapon on top of one of those missiles. That's right, David. And while it was thought that technology would be years away, the Washington Post is reporting that U.S. officials have concluded in a confidential assessment that North Korea could have a nuclear-capable ICBM by as early as next year. President Trump, as you know, David, has said he will not let that happen. Martha Raddatz with us on a Friday night. Martha, thank you. Meantime, to the dramatic collapse of the health care effort. After seven years of promises to repeal and replace Obamacare, it came down to just one vote, John McCain's. Tonight, we take you inside the drama, the vice president trying to convince him, and reports of President Trump calling McCain right before his vote. ABC's Mary Bruce back up on the Hill tonight. Senator John McCain walked out of the Capitol today just hours after delivering the final blow to his party's top priority. The drama playing out overnight. How do you improve health care in America when you throw 16 million people off of the health insurance they currently have? Lawmakers were voting on what they called a skinny repeal to roll back just parts of Obamacare. With two Republicans, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska and Susan Collins of Maine, expected to vote no, the vice president arrives prepared to cast a tie-breaking vote. The VP makes a beeline for McCain. They reportedly huddle for 21 minutes. But then McCain goes over to chat with Democrats. And when the vote begins, he reportedly takes a call from the president, one last attempt to close the deal. When McCain walks back in, the room wakes up. Democrats on their feet, Bernie Sanders nudging his neighbor. With all eyes on McCain, he casts his vote with a thumbs down. <laughs> Republican leader Mitch McConnell stone-faced, his arms crossed in defeat. Yes, this is a disappointment. A disappointment indeed. Why'd you vote now? Because I thought it was the right vote. Today, McCain tweeting, I urge my colleagues to trust each other, stop political games, and put health needs of American people first. But from President Trump, frustration. Boy, oh boy. They've been working on that one for seven years. Can you believe that? The swamp. But we'll get it done. Mary Bruce with us live tonight from Capitol Hill. And Mary, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell tweeting today, it is time to move on. Does this mean the effort to repeal and replace Obamacare is now over? Well, Republicans insist they aren't giving up, but David, most I've talked with admit this is going to be a very tall order. And to get anything done, they will maybe have to work with Democrats. But for now, leadership is moving on. Today, as they were heading out of town, we spotted Republicans being given new talking points on tax reform. David. Mary Bruce has been covering it all for us. Mary, thank you. There are new tensions with Russia tonight. The Kremlin seizing two U.S. diplomatic compounds in Russia and ordering the American embassy to cut hundreds of staff. The move comes as retaliation after Congress approved tough new economic sanctions on Russia for meddling in the U.S. election by a veto-proof bipartisan majority. That bill tonight now sits on the president's desk. The legislation also says President Trump cannot dial back those sanctions without congressional approval. He now has 10 days to sign it into law. We turn next at this hour to the severe storms hitting right now. Tens of millions of Americans under flash flood watches as we head into the weekend. More than 2,000 flights delayed at eight major airports here in the east. A blinding storm blowing this trampoline away in Oklahoma City. Planes at Washington's Reagan Airport 
taking off from very wet runways tonight. A very messy start to the weekend. Here all this Rob Marciano in it all. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. The same areas I got hit with heavy rain earlier this week are getting it again. So we're going to get flooding there, no doubt about it tonight. Take a look at this system. We've got flood watches down all the way to Mississippi. We've had severe thunderstorms across the Carolinas, but the heaviest rain is in Virginia, D.C., and Baltimore. That's where the flood watch is out overnight. Southern Pennsylvania, New Jersey get it as a coastal low takes shape. Even New York and Philadelphia, but that rain ends pretty quickly. The problem is three to four inches of rain over saturated soil is going to bring a high risk for flooding. Delaware to D.C. tomorrow. The next 18 hours are going to be dicey there. David? All right, Rob Marciano will be watching you this weekend. Thank you. We turn next here to the death of a police officer, the first on the scene of a car crash, rushing to help the people trapped inside the car when one of them then allegedly shot and killed him. Lieutenant Aaron Allen, a six-year veteran of the force, a husband and devoted father. And tonight, this question, why did they turn on the officer who was trying to help them survive? Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Tonight, a growing mystery and tragedy in a small Indiana town. A 38-year-old police officer trying to help people in a car accident shot and killed. Suspect is still out and about. Southport Police Lieutenant Aaron Allen responding to this rollover crash Thursday when police say one man trapped inside the car started shooting. We need to find out what's going on so nobody else gets hurt. Backup officers arriving to chaos, shooting at the car. Officers trying to defend themselves and arms flailing in the car. 28-year-old Jason Brown was rushed to the hospital and arrested on suspicion of murder. The car's passenger interviewed and released. Lieutenant Allen was a husband and father, named the department's officer of the year in 2015. He was killed doing what he loved. He responded to a crash with urgency to preserve life. Tragically, his was lost. And David, we still don't know why the suspect fired at Lieutenant Allen or even how that car accident happened, but we do know that Allen is the 27th officer shot and killed in the line of duty so far this year. David. Gio Benitez tonight. Thank you, Gio. And we turn next here to an ABC News investigation tonight, that newly released government video seen exclusively right here, taking us inside an encounter between two U.S. border officers and a teenager from Mexico. A short time later, that teen was dead. And the video appears to contradict what those officers testified happened. Here's ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, tonight. This video, obtained by ABC News, sheds new light tonight on the death of a 16-year-old Mexican high school student in the white sweatshirt after being caught by border officers smuggling drugs from Mexico. It comes as President Trump today told immigration agents in New York not to worry about being too rough in carrying out arrests. I said, please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, I said, you can take the hand away, okay? In this case of teenage smuggler Cruz Velasquez, well before Trump took office, things go bad for him almost immediately as these two customs officers start to examine two bottles from his shoulder bag. What's in them is highly concentrated methamphetamine dissolved in liquid. If they truly suspected there was a controlled substance in the bottle, they should have conducted a field test. Instead, the two officers encourage or at least permit the young man to drink it. Cruz now points at the bottle and she's saying, OK, drink it. And she makes the gesture that we associate with to drink. Now watch the male agent. He says, drink another one. You see them exchanging glances and smiles. Then it happens again. Two more sips. Four drinks in all. Within a half hour, the drugs take effect. The teenager can barely stand. A massive overdose with symptoms like a heart attack. His body is sending him the signal that something horrible is happening. The officers will later say under oath that the teenager volunteered to drink the substance. I never asked him to. He volunteered to. And I believe I gestured to him to go ahead. You told him to go ahead and drink on more than one occasion, did you? you not? No. The video suggests otherwise, but both officers remain on the job tonight. No punishment, not even a letter of reprimand, David. All right, Brian Ross with us tonight, and Brian's going to have much more coming up tonight, including how long it took to call for medical help. His 2020 investigation, Life and Death at the Border, is tonight at 10 p.m., right here on 2020. Brian, I'll see you then. In the meantime tonight, from London this evening, little Charlie Gard, the baby at the center of that international struggle, has now passed away. He died at a hospice one day after.